Hi friends, it's James and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be looking into the wonderful world of cogs. So what actually is a cog? Well, to put it very simply, it's just a way to organise all of your commands, events, listeners for your Discord bot. It basically helps to simplify all of this. So let me give you an example. So you can see here, so if you've been following along with this series, we've created loads of different commands. And we've just done this all within one file, this main file. And look at this, you can see here, look, it just looks messy, untidy, it's hard to follow, and it, it's just not ideal. So this is where cogs come in. So let's say, for example, we wanted to create a greetings cog. And this cog here would contain, for example, this hello command, this on member join command, this on member remove command. You see here what I'm saying? And then let's say we were to create another cog called music. And this one would contain our join command, our leave command, our pause command, our resume command, so on and so forth. You can see here what I'm saying. So that's what a cog is and why we want to use them. And that's exactly what I'm going to be showing you in this video today, how we can actually use them to make our code a lot easier to read and just generally improve the quality. So just before we jump in, I want to quickly say apologies for not uploading over the last couple of weeks. I was taking a break as I was on a holiday. However, I'm back now and I'm ready to get going again. Also, I want to quickly say that I've got a Discord server. So if you've got any problems when creating your Discord bot or any tech related things, feel free to join and ask away as we'd be happy to help. However, if you've got no problems, feel free to join anyway, we'd love to have you. But anyway, let's jump into this video in creating cogs. So then the first thing that we want to be doing is we want to just remove all of these commands that we've made over the past few episodes of the series because we want to start with a blank file so we can reorganize it all and make it nice so we can stop implementing the cogs. However, we don't actually want to delete these commands because we want to be using them in the future. We want to use these join, leave because, yeah, they're pretty cool commands and functions. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create a very temporary file for now where we can just copy and paste um, these commands. And I've just misspelt this again. So temp, here we go. We're just going to copy all of this and we're going to paste it in here for later. Let me just rename it to do .py just to make it look nice. And now we can delete it. So let's delete everything in our main file because we want to start again from the beginning so we can write it for cogs. And well, we want to first import the commands, import discord.py. So let's do that. So import discord and import discord.ext import command. Apologies, this should be from from import uh, from discord.ext import command. And we also want to import OS. And now we want to import our API key like we have done here, um, here from API keys import all because remember we have that separate API keys where we keep them, where we keep the uh, token for our bot to run it because it's just an easier way to store it in a separate file. So we can copy this and we can paste this into our new file. And then we want to copy our initiation, our client here. Again, if you don't understand any of these commands, go back and watch my previous episodes in this series as they explain exactly what each of this means. For example, it explains exactly what this line means if you don't know what it is. So you head back and have a look around and you'll find all the answers to what these mean. And now we want to import this on ready function because we need, to, we need our bot to get ready. And we also want to import the final command of just running it, client.run, with our bot token. There we go. So we've now reset our bot back to a very basic thing. It doesn't have any commands at the moment. It just All it does is it will just become ready. It will just join the server and be active. That's all it's doing at the moment. But now we can start adding the cog, the main cog functions. And this is where it gets really fun. So then. I'm going to explain along the way what each of these commands mean for a cog, 
So yeah, let's get started. So we first want to create an array. So, and this is going to store all of our cogs. And I'll get into this a bit later about why we, why we need this. But we want to type this initial underscore extensions is equal to an open and close square brackets. There we go. And now before we go further in creating any more code, we want to create a cogs folder. So let's go ahead and create a new folder and call it cogs. So what is the purpose of this cogs folder? Well then, each time we create a cog, we'll create a new file and put it inside of this cogs file. A cogs folder, sorry. And each of these files inside of this cogs folder represents a cog. So going back to the example I gave at the beginning, that greetings cog. The greetings one that would contain our hello command, our on member join command, and our on member remove command. So let's create that. So inside of this cogs folder, if we right click and create a new file, and let's give it the, um, the name greetings.py. So this is our first cog within inside of our cogs folder. And so later in this video, we're going to be writing the code, and I'm going to be explaining how you actually create a cog inside of this file. But let's head back to the main file and set up the initial loading of the cogs. So let's just pretend for this current moment in time that we've got all the code inside of this greetings file. So we've got a greetings cog set up. We now need to actually import it into our bot and tell our bot that we've got one. So we're going to create a little for loop here that searches through this cogs folder and gets every single cog inside it and loads it into the bot. I hope that makes sense. So let's do that. So let's go for file name in OS dot list directory, single quotes, and then the cogs folder like that. I'm not going to explain what this does as this is just very basic Python. So I'm going to assume you know what that does. So now we're going to create an if statement for if so to search for if the file name ends with um, .py because we only want to be looking for um, files with the extension of .python because that's a Python file. Like that. File name .ends with .py. And now, so the last line we need to do is to actually add this fi these files into this array here. And to do this, all we type is initial, I cannot spell today, underscore extensions dot append open and close brackets and then double speech marks cogs dot plus and then file name and then like that so uh like that so let me just quickly explain so we're adding each of these files inside of this cogs folder into this array here and we're adding this string of cogs dot before the file name and this little section here this python bit here this basically just takes the file name, so in our case, greetings, and removes the .py from the end. So when we run this code, what it's going to do is, let, let me show you. So we're going we're gonna, to, let's just print out the um, array so I can show you what it's doing. Uh, underscore extensions. So now if we run it, you'll see here that it's, oh, we can see here that we've actually got an error. And that's because we've actually forgotten to copy across one thing that we need, which is this bit here. So let's copy that across and paste it in. Now we'll save it. Let's rerun it. And now I should be able to show you what this does. And I've made a spelling mistake. Apologies again. So let's rerun. And now look, you can see here, inside of this array, we have got cogs.greetings. And so that's our cogs bit here. And this greetings bit is the name of this file. And if we would have multiple files, which we will do by the end of this video, so let's say a music one, then it would also have cogs.greeting and cogs.music. You see what I'm going here? That's what it does. So now what we need to do is load this array that contains all of our cog files into our actual bot. So what we want to do is if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to uh, underscore underscore main underscore underscore. I'm going to assume you know what this is as this is Python uh, that you learn in the basics when you're learning Python. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to go over what that is, um, I'm going to just assume you know it. If not, just Google it, it'll explain. Then we're going to create a for loop. So we, we want to type for extension in initial extensions, oops, initial extensions, let's just copy it, save us typing it, colon, and then client dot load underscore extension 
Open and close brackets, extension. Now, let me explain what this is doing. We've created a for loop where it will go through each of this array and load it into our bot. So we're loading each of these cogs that are in this array into the bot. I hope that makes sense in what I'm explaining here. And that's everything that we need in our main file. This is now going to successfully import cogs into our bot. But now let me show you actually how we create a cog, which, which I kind of brushed over briefly, and what we actually need to put inside these cog files. So as I said previously, this cogs folder is where we're going to store all of our cogs. And every single file inside of this cogs folder represents a cog. And each cog can contain multiple commands, events, listeners, so on and so forth. So now let's set up this greetings cog. So we want to import discord again into this. So import discord and then from discord.ext import commands. And now we're going to create a class because this is how cogs work. And we want to give it the same name as the name of our file, so greetings. And we want to open and close brackets and import commands.cog like that. And now we want to create a init function. Again, I'm going to assume you know what this is, as this is Python, and you should have learned this when learning the basics. And we just want to assign the client object um, client, like that. So now this is where we get into actually creating commands and events inside of these cogs. So we're creating a greetings cog at the moment. So let's go ahead and take the commands that we made um, initially in previous episodes of this series and put them into this greetings. So we can see here we've got a hello one and we have got an on member join one. And let's just take the on member remove one, even though that's technically not a greeting. And we want to paste it in here. And you can see here that it has a formatted it. So yeah, we just need to make sure that's all formatted. There we go, all formatted. And now if we were to run this right, our cog wouldn't actually work. And well, there's a reason why this won't. It's because when we're creating cogs, we don't use at client.event or at client.command. We use something different. And that's because we're inside of a cog. So let's say here we take this hello command. We don't use client.command. What we want to do is replace the client with commands. So whenever you're creating a command inside of a cog, you always do at command.command. And then it's all the same from there. All the same from what I showed you in the previous episodes of this series. That's how you do commands. But events are slightly different. You don't replace the client with commands. We do something different. So what we do is, is, let's just remove this and start again. What we want to do is we want to replace this with commands.cog.listener, open and close brackets. And then after this section, it's all the same. So yes, if you're creating a command inside of a cog, you always want to do this, at commands.command. However, if you're creating an event, you want to do this, at commands.cog dot listener so yeah let me replace this bit here with what we need it to do there we go so now if we were to run this yes we've set up the cogs like this we set up our commands inside of this however it still wouldn't work and that's because of one reason we actually need to export this greetings class out of out of this file we need to actually add this cog into the actual bot, if that makes sense. So to do this, we just create another function called setup, and we want to import client into it. And then all we do is do client.add underscore cog, open and close brackets, and then the name of the class, which in our case is greetings, open and close bracket, and then client. And there we go. We've now actually set up a cog, a greetings cog to be more specific. So yes, let's run this and let's see it in action. So look, we had that hello command here, as you can see here, hello. So let's run that and you should, you should see it works. And we have got an error here. And that's because I've forgotten one thing to do, which I apologize about. We need to import self 
into all of these functions. So we need to type self like that, and that's all we need. So let's rerun this again, and then hopefully it should work. So let's run. And look, there you go. You can see here, it worked. It gave us the required output. And look, if we type help here, and just, so, just in case you didn't know, um, help will show all of the commands in that your bot is able to do. And so you know how we created a greetings cog. It's actually created a category here called greetings and put our hello command inside. So this is a way to see if your cogs have been set up correctly because it should appear when you type the help. And that's exactly how we create a cog. And so that's everything really to do with cogs and everything you really need to know. So just to recap, you want to create a COGS folder and inside of all these COGS folders you will have multiple Python files and these each of these Python files represents a COG and inside each of these COGS you can contain commands, events, listeners and so on. And inside of this main file, the main initial file for your bot, we import all of these COGS into the actual bot and we do this via an array. We search through that COGS folder and get the name of that file, add it to the array, and then import it into the bot. And now inside of these actual files inside of this COGS folder, this is the actual COG. This contains the commands, the events, and the listeners. To do and to set up this COG, we have a class. And inside of this class is where you write all of your commands and events. And at the end, you export that class out by doing setup and then client.addcog, and then the name of your class here. And that's how you do a cog. And so, in previous episodes of this series, we covers, we've covered multiple things, like music, and so many other things, errors and all of that. So what I'm going to go do is I'm going to work through creating multiple different cogs for all of these commands that we have created. I'm not going to go through it with you because... It would just be boring, and I've already shown you how to create a cog. So I'll be back as soon as I've added all of these. Okay then, so I've gone through and reorganized and moved everything into its relevant cog. And look here, look at this. In our directory, you can already see it looks so much neater. And now in our main file, the file that used to have, used to be so many lines long, and just looked messy, untidy, unkept, was hard to read, is now just this. It looks so much nicer and cleaner. So now let's have a look at the cogs that I created. So the greetings cog, I didn't touch that. I didn't add anything else to it. It's exactly the same as when we were going through it. However, I've added two more, a music cog and an admin cog. In this music cog, it contains all of our join functions, leave, pause, resume, stop, play, queue, so many ones, all the ones that we covered in episode 6 I think it was of this series. One thing I just wanted to point out, when I was creating this music cog, you just need to take into account that the um, audio files will be in a different place. And well, as we were making our directory, our folder, our files so much nicer, I decided to move all of our audio files just into a folder called audio. So I had to incorporate that here into the code. Bear that in mind if you do so as well. Now let's have a look at this admin cog. This admin cog, it contains like the band command, the kick command, the um, unban one, the welcome the user, um, embed, uh, that's not really an admin command, I just shoved it here because that, I couldn't really think of a cog to put it into, and well, it's not really that relevant to anything. I'll most likely remove it in the end. But yeah, that was all of the commands that we've created over the past 12 episodes of this series. All was put into three cogs and nicely organised, which is such a massive, just a relief to me to just look at. It's so much easier and nicer to read now. But that now kind of brings us to the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. However, just before you leave, I just want to quickly ask you, what other ideas do you want to see? What other things do you want to learn about Discord PY? I've still got a load of ideas in my list to do. However, I want to know, what do you want to be learning? So yeah, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, while you're down there, please do consider smashing the like button as it would really help this video out in the YouTube algorithm. But anyway, I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya!